This video is sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend. Click on the link in the description and use the code PACKERMAN to save 10% on any order. May the 11th, 1953. An infamous day in Texas history. Because, well, this was the day that the deadliest tornado in its entire history hit Waco. Today we're going to be talking about that very same twister. Welcome to the very first episode of Tornado Tales. Look, oh, that is scary. The truck is, oh my gosh. Holy smokes. What's happening ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man and welcome to the very first episode of Tornado Tales. And since this is the first episode of this show, I figured we might as well talk about the first tornado of its very kind. The 1953 Waco, Texas tornado. Now why do I call it the first of its kind? Well, it is the very first tornado to officially be rated an F5 with the Fujita scale. Now here's the thing about this show. Uh, I'm not going to go into to all the specifics about how a tornado is formed and, you know, all that jazz. That's not really what this show is about. And there are plenty of other YouTube videos out there that'll tell you everything you need to know about how a tornado forms and all that stuff. And besides, if you've watched tornado videos in the past, you pretty much know at this point what they do anyway and how they're formed. What this show is all about is we're going to be taking a back, look back at a lot of these uh, different tornado stories. And this is kind of a cautionary tale kind of series to take a look back at all these devastating events and what can be done to prevent them in the future. So for this particular tornado, we are taking a trip back in time to May the 11th. 1953. This tornado was actually part of a series of deadly tornadoes, a tornado outbreak that occurred between May the 9th and May the 11th, 1953. At least 33 different tornadoes hit the U.S. between May the 9th and May the 11th, resulting in a total of 144 total deaths. However, it was the Waco tornado that ended up being the deadliest out of all of them. And that's the one we're going to be talking about today. Believe it or not, there was an old legend that was associated with the city of Waco. An old legend where tornadoes, or at least powerful ones, could not touch down in the city of Waco, which was located in a geological depression. Supposedly due to the bluffs around the Brazos River. Tornadoes and other severe weather was relatively rare and mild in the city. However, that myth was completely shattered to pieces on May the 11th, 1953, when the very first tornado to be rated an F5 on the Fujita scale came rumbling through the town. The tornado first touched down at 4.10 p.m. Central Standard Time, about three miles north-northwest of the Lorena community. It quickly began damaging structures, destroying a home near Lorena as it tracked northeastward. And then as it neared Waco, there were operators of weather radar at the Texas A&M University that detected the signature hook echo that you would normally see with a tornado. It was one of the first times that radar had linked tornadoes with the hook signature, the hook echo signature. However, this tornado was completely obscured by heavy rain. What we would call an HP tornado or high precipitation tornado. These types of tornadoes are extremely dangerous simply because you can't see them. And it's because of this high precipitation nature that might have heightened the death toll in Waco as a result because nobody knew that it was coming. And because of that, the appropriate actions weren't taken and that's probably what resulted in the high death toll that Waco saw from this twister. As the storm began hitting the city of Waco, hundreds of people that were on the streets began crowding into buildings for shelter. 
to try to take shelter from not only the heavy rain, but baseball-sized hail. However, there were very few buildings in Waco at the time that could withstand the winds. And when the tornado struck, most of them just immediately collapsed on themselves. Which also probably attributed to the high death toll. 30 people died in the R.T. Dennis building alone. Now, there were some buildings that had steel reinforcement that were able to weather the storm, such as the Dr. Pepper uh, bottling plant. It remained standing, but it had sustained pretty heavy damage. The 22-story Amico office building, which is now known as the Alico building, actually was able to weather the storm as well. Bricks from collapsed structures piled up in the street to a depth of five feet. Just, um, just for reference point, I'm about six foot tall. So that means that if you piled up the bricks from the damaged buildings in the street, it would probably come up to about here. If I'm standing straight up, that's how high the pile of bricks was from the uh, from all the buildings that were destroyed by this tornado. Some people were actually trapped under the rubble for 14 or more hours. And numerous bodies remained buried under piles of rubble for many days and were completely unaccounted for. After completely devastating Waco, uh, the tornado continued to the north northeast and dissipated about five miles west of Axtell. While the tornado did, did destroy homes outside the city, all of the media attention was focused on the destruction of Waco, Texas. All told, 114 people died in this tornado. 597 people were injured. And there was over $41 million in property damage. Now, bear in mind, that's in 1953 dollars. If we were to convert that to 2023 dollars, that's $527 million. That's insanity. The tornado destroyed 196 businesses and factories, 150 homes were destroyed, and over 2,000 cars sustained at least some level of damage. Some were completely crushed by the bricks and falling debris from buildings. Um, some were completely unrecognizable as a result of this tornado. In addition, following this tornado, attempts to organize disaster relief were stymied by poor organization. I mean, this is 1953 we're talking about. Uh, local residents had not expected the tornado whatsoever because of the local legend and had assumed that the area's geograph geography safeguarded Waco from tornadoes. But, I mean, come on, Mother Nature always finds a way to say, uh, no, screw your rules. I'm going to plop one right down on top of you. So, screw your so-called uh, urban legend or whatever the hell else. You know, and if anything, this proves that tornadoes can hit anytime, anywhere, no matter what. Initially, the tornado also severed communications between downtown Waco and outlying areas, so assistance uh, was pretty slow to arrive. However, there was a silver lining that came out of all of this. Uh, the relief efforts eventually spurred greater coordination between civilians and local governments, leading to the development of civil defense. Uh, notably, the Waco event was one of the first instances that proved the effectiveness of radar in tracking tornado genesis, the hook echo. And coincidentally, another such case occurred later in the same year. Uh, the F5 tornado that struck Worcester, Massachusetts. And that's a tornado we will be covering at a later date. 1953 was a very violent year for tornadoes. Like, there were several powerful F5 twisters. Uh, there was also a powerful tornado outbreak that hit Flint, Michigan. Um... Yeah, 1953, in terms of tornadoes, was pretty violent. And the Waco tornado uh, pretty much epitomized that um, by nearly destroying the entire city of Waco. In addition to uh, advancing, uh, or at least trying to forward the advancement of uh, weather radar, a dedicated weather radar, um, Texas uh, supported the implementation of 20 radar facilities each with about a 200 mile wide radius that proved successful in reducing death tolls 
and later tornadoes. This system became known as the Texas Radar Tornado Warning Network and included communications between weather officials, storm spotters, and local officials. So, if there was a silver lining that came out of this uh, Waco tornado, it helped catalyze development of a nationwide severe weather warning system. And with the 114 total fatalities from this tornado, the Waco tornado remains the 11th deadliest tornado on record in the United States and is tied with the 1902 Goliad tornado as the deadliest tornado in Texas history. And thus ends the story of the 1953 Waco F5 tornado. Um, if you like this uh, edition of Tornado Tales, the very first edition, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to try to do about one of these a month. It's, it takes a lot of time and effort to uh, put these episodes together. Um, of course, the easy part is, you know, sitting here and talking to the camera, of course, but, you know, having to go through and splice everything together and do research and all that other stuff, it does take some time. So I'm going to try to crank out at least one of these per month, if at all possible. Uh, I might do more if this ends up, if, if this series ends up becoming a popular series on this channel. So we'll take a wait and see approach on that. Uh, the next tornado that I'm definitely going to be covering, since I covered the very first F5, to ever be recorded in the United States officially since they started tr keeping track of tornadoes in 1950. The next episode is going to showcase what is to this day the last F5 tornado or in this case EF5 tornado to ever take place in the United States and that is the 2013 Moore Oklahoma tornado. But we'll be covering that in the next episode. So uh, thank you very much for watching the first ever episode of Tornado Tales. And until next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. See you later. Hey, ladies and germs. Thank you for watching tonight's video. If you would like to sponsor the channel, be sure to click on the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Otherwise, hit like and subscribe to be able to tune in for more great content like you just saw today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time. This is the Packer Man, signing out.